and gave us a wonderful base to build an incredible series on. So the other thing that we learned about um, uh, Doom 2 when we went to CD-ROMs is we had this, this incredibly big executable. It might, it might have been a couple megabytes, right? You know, who knows? Um, but it was really big, anyways. And uh, the, we, it took a long time to install all these files because we had this great compression that we could put all these files, but it took a long time to put all these files on your hard drive. And so we were sitting there watching the cycle. It just took, I mean, I think the original CNC might have taken 35 minutes to install. I mean, it was a long time. And so we kept working on getting it better and better and better. We got it down to maybe 15, still felt too long. And so, again, I would have to say this is a, a stroke of brilliance. A guy named Aaron Powell, who was one of the first artists, said, why don't we do some animations and stuff while it's installing? And so that led to the whole install. How many people here like the installs from the original CMG? Yeah. Yeah. That became three people's full-time job for the next <laughs> ten years. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it really was, because the beginning it wasn't so bad. There was only one kind of CD-ROM, or maybe four or five, and there only was one sort of protocol, but Windows was out, and so it wasn't so bad. We were a DOS game originally, and when Windows came out, we had to hire somebody with Windows. But as time went on, it got more and more complicated. It got really hard. Um, and we got more and more demanding of ourselves, so up until Renegade, um, we had still used the same install, but with Renegade, we actually loaded our own lightweight 3D engine, that's why you have the guy running and so everything. So yeah, all the way, all the way yeah, through when Westwood was doing all the installers, we had people dedicated to it. So something I always thought was really fantastic at some point just became impossible to do. So uh, obviously we introduced the idea of expansion packs too because the game was so successful. One last thing about uh, forecasts. The original CNC, they said we said, wow, we did Doom 2, it did 300,000 copies, obviously this is going to be a huge success. The version goes, yeah, you know, a new story, original IP, doesn't have Herbert involved. You know, we think maybe 60,000 copies. <laughs> 70,000? So, as we got very, very close, we got within the last few months, I think it was the summer when we did our ECTS show, and uh, we showed the game off. The line at the version booth, they had given us, uh, I think it was seven stations for people to play the game, and the line literally went across the conference hall, and they were throwing people off after five minutes. They said, you can't play anymore, we've got to get somebody else on this thing. And they were looking at it going, what the hell happened? We had Toonstruck. This, the, half the booth was Toonstruck. Anybody here was Toonstruck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, they, uh, they basically completely blew it on that, but they realized at that point, well, we better be ready. So they said, okay, we're going to be ready to sell 100,000 units day one. 60 days out, they had 150,000 pre-orders. They go, ooh, yeah, so we probably need to sell more now. So one of the thing is it shipped in October. It shipped over a million copies by the end of the year. Um, a complete smash success. Back then, 100,000 really was a hit. We were platinum before our first year. And uh, that started all the CMC. And that probably um, talks about a lot of the rest of my life, actually. <laughs> so, uh, at least the next decade or so. Uh, Command & Conquer, the o Covert Operations, and then, of course, Red Alert. I'm going to pop through some screenshots just to remind you guys. You saw the video earlier, but this is what this is what our amazing game of life. Oh, and I, I do want to talk about that for a second. Photo Real. This was as close as we could get to Photo Real at the time, guys, from top down. We really took it very seriously. It wasn't stylized. We were trying to make this thing look like a satellite feed as best we possibly could with uh, 320 by 200 pixel graphics. So. Um, you get an idea here, we did the sand things. We thought we were really clever by having uh, maps that didn't have like just bushes and stuff on them. Really fun. And um, when I say we took it seriously, we really took it seriously. If you remember the first CNC, it was very, very dark. Um, it kind of got lighter and more campy as time went on because we, we could see the Red Alert influence. I think with CNC3 we brought it back and I think you'll see the CNC4, certainly what you've already seen, um, certainly bringing it back to its roots and making it a very, very serious approach. Everyone remember Seth there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. let me tell you, we got a lot of grief from that scene. People, people complained um, Virgin did the best advertising campaign that, uh, that got us in so much trouble. So they did a big billboard, it was on the, uh, I think it was the M5 that goes right to London, if that's the name of the, it's like a ring road that goes around London. Massive, um, massive billboard. And on the billboard, it was a big matrix of people. It had Idi Amin, it had Hitler, it had Stalin, it had all these people, right? And in the middle, on the bottom, it had Francois Mitterrand, right? Who was the uh, French president at the time, right? <laughs> and on the bottom, it said previous high scores, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Francois Mitterrand was on there because he had just done nuclear testing in the, um, in the French Polynesia, and it was very controversial at the time. The French, the frogs went nuts. They were crazy. They said, you cannot do this. 
it's a national insult. They made a big, it was a huge political event. And so they finally went back, they went finally went back and they said, okay, 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 we'll fix it. So now when you drove down the M5, there was this entire screen with one white-out box. <laughs> right? So of course, all the magazines and all the newspapers the next day had the original, and <laughs> that was probably the best PR version ever did for CMC. Um, I got emails from people saying we were completely out of our minds. I said, yeah, just a little. Um, anyway, so, I had a lot of fun with it. Red Alert, we said, you know what, we love this wacky science about CMC. We love the idea that there's these crazy new technologies, but they're not crazy enough. We want to do really wild stuff. And researching fringe military technology, you can't help but look at the past. And you look at the Philadelphia experiment, you look at Nikola Tesla, and you go, oh my god, so much crazy stuff went on during World War II that we decided to set the next game back in time. Originally, it was going to be a second expansion pack, but we fell in love with creating all new units, creating all new story, creating all this stuff. So in front of the fins, it just grew so much, it really had to be a full, um, I wouldn't even call it a sequel, a full new start on the franchise, a new storyline on the franchise. And that became Red Alert. Red Alert had a lot more fun in it. Um, we had uh, all sorts of crazy, it still had a little bit of edge to it, because of course we're still the original CNC team, and we hadn't really kind of found that campy groove that we were in, but it definitely had a lot more fun in it. The, all the video stuff was shot to be very entertaining, and um, we had some really neat stuff. Obviously the graphics went up dramatically. These are uh, scenes that were rendered from the game that were kept up in high resolution. <coughs> it was literally high resolution, double, double the width, double the height. And even something as crazy as it came from Red Alert. Did, did everybody ever, did everybody get a chance oh, yeah. to play it came from Red Alert? Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, a fantastic, fantastic bonus mission of that. Um, the giant ants and the things that were on those. Anyway. <laughs> um, so after that, we went into a bit of a hiatus. Um, if I learned something from this, it was, don't ship a great game one year, a fantastic game the next year, and then have crickets for three years, right? That's really, that's really hard to do to the fans. Um, we, took off, we took on so much stuff with Tiberian Sun, and looking back, it didn't seem like it at the time because some of the stuff was pretty subtle. It wasn't until Red Alert 2 that we really leveraged it. But we put in the voxel units, we have 3D units that would climb over the terrain and turn and bend instead of sprites. We added lighting on those guys so they would pick up lighting, a lot of technology that we were developing for Blade Runner at the time. Um, we had destructible terrain. It didn't play into the game as well because we literally just it got into the game so late we didn't have a chance to make a lot of missions to take advantage of it, but it was really cool. Unit veterancy, which everybody was really louding on uh, Red, Alert, uh, Red Alert 2. Wow, isn't it so cool? Your units get veterancy, they get experience, and they get new abilities. Well, it actually existed in the great sun, it just didn't matter as much. So, um, and burrowing units, and that one we'll come back to too. Very, very cool stuff from the CNC. Um, Iberian Sun, obviously, uh, a long time in the making, um, huge success for us. We advertised it on television during the, uh, the uh, football match in England. It was most ex the, the most bizarre thing in the world for me to be sitting in an English pub the day that the trailer went up, and it was a commercial with Ateta. Um, it was a long, a long story, it was a livestock commercial with a person that's basically ignoring their life. And it was right in the middle of the football game, and the, the pub, it's all loud and everything, and it went completely quiet. There was nothing going on because this, this commercial was just so bizarre. The reason like, what the hell is this? So there's like quiet, quiet, quiet. And at the end, it had um, the picture of uh, the CNC logo. All it had was a CNC logo. And every guy in that pub cheered. And every woman in the pub went, what are they cheering about? <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> so uh, anyways, these are pictures of CNC Tiberian Sun. Um, just pulled a couple. I pulled all these off the internet too, by the way. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of libraries of this stuff. I wish I did. I would have, yeah. I know, you guys have it, but uh, sadly, I have no internet access. I have no uh, stable access. Um, the Walker is something that we really had a lot of fun with in Tiberian Sun. Uh, we thought these, these guys were a lot of fun, and um, I know you'll see in a few minutes that, that, that they make a, a stunning and uh, um, impactful re reprisal here. Um, and the carry almost basically from Doom, which we uh, renamed. <laughs> 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 so, 